What's up, Freedom Fighters? Hey, welcome back to the show. Today, I've got my good buddy, uh, Vic Thompson on. We're going to be talking about really his story and the story of his partners. And it's an interesting story. We have a, we have, we have a long relationship together. Actually, uh, Vic and his partners uh, joined our coaching program a little over two years ago. They were all gainfully employed and now are all self-employed and uh, running a pretty amazing business. So it's a great story. If you're thinking about transitioning out of something you don't like doing or out of corporate America, you're going to want to listen up. Welcome to Real Estate Investing Secrets. We're all looking for freedom and the opportunity to live better, more fulfilling lives. But most of us were trained our entire lives to work for someone else and chase their dreams. How can we use real estate investing as a vehicle to achieve financial freedom? My life is dedicated to answering your real estate investing questions and helping you build an investing business that allows you to change your life and the world around you and to enable you to turn your dreams financial freedom into a reality. My name is Mike Hambright from FlipNerd.com, and your questions get answered here on the Real Estate Investing Secrets Show. Hey, Vic. Welcome to the show. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. It's good, good to have you guys. You, it's funny. Um, there, there are things in life. I've coached hundreds of people. I've done lots of stuff. There's people that you just really click with, and, uh, and, and you, you, Vic, and your partners are some of those folks. We just have this kind of relationship where it's kind of gone from professional to, to friends, right? It's just this interesting uh, relationship. So I appreciate you guys. And I love your story too. And I'm glad that we're going to share some of it today. Yeah. Likewise. We feel the same way, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, go, I want you to tell us a little bit about your background before we start. I just want to kind of say yeah. these, these guys have an unusual relationship. We kind of call them the three amigos team nitro. Um, and they've, they, they've these three, three guys that really supported each other, like buddies, like I've never seen before, all focused on leaving corporate America and getting into real estate investing. And it's, it's a little bit unusual that there's th three partners in, in a, in a business that goes from idea to, uh, successfully doing, um, some decent volume now. Right. Um, but, uh, anyway, I'm glad to share, cause I think today for, there's a lot of people that are, you know, I'm a corporate refugee, you're a corporate refugee. That's what I call myself. Um, and so, uh, that's one of the things I call myself. I won't tell the other, uh, things I call myself. Uh, but, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people that want to do what you've done and what I've done. They want to leave a job that they don't like. And you got, you did pretty well in your last job and ultimately decided that yeah. wasn't for you. And so we'll get into that more before we get started. Tell us a little bit about uh, you and your background. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. Um, yeah, I was, I went to the Air Force Academy undergrad and that's how I'd know one of my partners, Sam, really well. So we've just known each other for so long. Um, I got out of the military, went and did the MBA thing, you know, got a big corporate job. I was living in California, but I was still working for someone else. Mm -hmm. And uh, I reconnected with Sam and uh, met his buddy Travis at the time. And we were just kind of thinking about, um, and we need to buy real estate. And in California, there was just, you know, a lot of barriers. And at the time, I was the process improvement guy uh, for my, you know, the Lean Six Sigma guy at my company and going through their general manager program. So I was familiar with, you know, getting great experience, how to run a business. And I had the opportunity to move into a sales role. And that's when Sam and I were talking and he's out in Georgia. I'm in California. And, uh, I came out here a couple times and I was like, man, what if I just moved out here? You know, it's kind of the, what if, what <laughs> if you just kind of randomly happened? Yeah. And that's when I met our other partner, Travis, uh, him and Sam had been hanging out here in Georgia for a while, for a couple of years. So I flew back home and I kind of pitched the idea to my company and, you know, Hey, there's some family out here in Georgia as well. Um, there was a significant emotional event, uh, one of my best friends from the Air Force Academy died of cancer at 30 years old. Mm. So that was really the emotional event that kind of kicked us and said, hey, man, we should go for this. So uh, the short story is we were going to buy a house, just us, and become landlords, all three of us. And then we asked some of our real estate friends. I want to say it was Bob Scott kind of ushered us your way. Yeah. And they said, hey, you got to check these guys out. And I remember being here in Georgia – and uh applying like you guys were doing hey if you're veterans you know we're gonna give you guys you can go through this for free as we try to you know pilot our program yeah. before we go yeah and we signed up and i remember landing like flying back to california and we were in 
And then seven weeks later, you know, we went through all the sauna tasks and the training there in the early days. And, you yeah. know, we had a marketing machine going. So that's kind of how it all started. The problem with that was, is Sam was here in our current market is the Athens greater area. Travis was still in Illinois and I was in California. So the next part was get everyone to Georgia. And they've been on the podcast before me. If you go and watch those episodes with uh, Travis Oglesby and Sam Thurman talking about, we all moved into Sam's house. Okay. So <laughs> this was kind of crazy. Sam, Sam, was, Sam, Sam was married, by the way. So his wife had to deal with that. <laughs> married with three dogs. Okay. So we came out here. Uh, I moved into the house. Uh, Travis moved into the house and the deal was, Hey, six months, you know, we got to launch the business. It's so hard to do it on the phone because we're all still working full time. Uh, and we knew that we wanted to get this started, but it was going to be, you know, we had to ease into it and we couldn't do that in, in different States. So with the job flexibility that we did have, Sam worked from home as well. And, and Travis, uh, on the road quite a bit for sales, you know, we were all in this unique position. Yep. Yep. Cool. And the, the, for anybody that's listening right now, I, I've been coaching and mentoring people for about 10 years and we launched a new program, the current program that we have, which these things evolve all the time. We constantly make them better, but we, we really created a thorough program about two years ago, uh, a little over two years ago. And right before we started, we reached out to some veterans and put some feelers out and we said, Hey, we're, we'll allow some people to come in as beta testers. And the truth is, is we, we're trying to do a, a good thing uh, and get some uh, people using our systems and our programs and stuff like that. And the truth is, is uh, it's, this isn't like a veteran thing at all. I mean, we, we tried to add some value to people, but the truth is, is when a lot of people join something for free, a lot of people don't take it very seriously, but these guys did, these guys jumped on and we're all over it. And, uh, and that says a lot about the, uh, how bad you want it, right? That's one of the challenges a lot of people that get started in, in coaching or, or want to get into real estate investing even. They just, you know, you question, they say they want it, but are they really willing to do the work? Because it's hard work, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So um, so let's talk a little bit about, um, you, without telling the whole story, because we could spend a lot of time on that, you guys kind of fell like dominoes, right? Like you, you guys were unified and that you wanted the same thing. You decided that you want to work together. You started a company together and one by one people are leaving their job or freeing up their capacity to take a bigger role in the business. And so you were talk about how you were, you really were providing more, maybe some financial support. You were a little more limited in your role. Uh, of course we, we talked a little bit about beforehand about how people could kind of rely on your credit, right? Cause when you still have a job, you still have credit. When you leave your job, you're just, you're kind of dead to lenders, traditional lenders for a couple of years at least, but talk about kind of that transition about how you each fell in line. And maybe for, I'll say this too, sorry to give you a little more context for people that are listening right now. It's not always three people, but sometimes it's a husband and wife team and like one yeah. might be able to, they might be able to live off of one income while they're transitioning. Just kind of talk about the importance of having that. I know your company's runway properties, but talk about how you, how you can position to have some runway to ease into real estate investing. Yeah, uh, absolutely, Mike. So we all started, like, if I just, when everyone got here to Georgia, we all, you know, having our jobs and working remotely, it's tough because we were, we were serious, but we didn't have the capacity. But yeah. that income we had from our jobs allowed us to be, I'll just call it sloppy, because it's, hey, I can't make that appointment at this time. I can't do this because I have to do my main job. So we immediately saw that we're going to have to start unloading people. Um, not all at once, because if we did do that, then we were getting loans to do some of our deals. And like you mentioned, if you don't have a job, uh, not so much, but if you have a big time job and you move to a smaller town, you can basically get any kind of loan you want. So right. the thought behind that is let's get our experience up where we're comfortable enough where we can fully employ someone full time. And then it's a little bit of a balancing act to say, Hey, we need to, we're, we can maybe fund one person to go and work full time, but we still need to get those loans or augment whatever we need to have to do the deal. So the plan was let's get everyone in the same market. Then let's cut our teeth, you know, apply the things that we've learned and we'll have, when we get to a certain point that makes sense. That's the other thing we, with partnerships is tough. You want to get things written and in the sand, but in this game, it's not an entrepreneurship. It's not like that. So we said, <laughs> We get to this point, we don't know what it's going to be. 
uh, we'll set someone free. And to be honest, it couldn't have been a, a cooler way that it happened. Um, uh, Sam and I and some others went on a, a trip to Greece and he hadn't been on a vacation and he'd been slogging away at the corporate job for so long. By the time he came back, he's like, I mean, I'm ready to go full time. And the partners got together. We made sure that there was, you know, enough runway as far as cash to give him some time to transition. Because when you go and start doing deals, it takes a, it's not overnight, you know, and right. uh, you know how it is working with sellers, you know, the first call and you getting it under contract and doing the deal, there's a ton of follow up needed. So that happened. Uh, he was, he was pretty much out first. And then Travis had a unique connection with you guys, which I'm sure folks that are listening uh, know a little bit about Travis. Um, but he was able to, take on his, do his job, take on some more runway activities and work with you guys. Whereas my job was a little more demanding and limiting as far as my time towards the business. So I did play a larger financial role in saying, okay, hey, here's money for marketing. If we need any gaps filled. And I'm not saying the other guys did it, but that was the good thing about having three is, hey, we got this extra financial capacity where okay, you can't be in it in the day to day, but that's still valued. You can still get loans, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So I'll pause there because I just don't want to go on for too long. Yeah, no different. I mean, it's no different than a, if you're a husband and wife team or we've had, you know, lots of, I'm, my, my wife works in the business. We're a husband and wife team. We didn't, we both went cold turkey. Most folks have heard my story before. It was, it wasn't, we both left our jobs, but I got fired and she had just had my son and didn't go back to work. And so it was, everybody's situation is unique. But the point is, is like, if you can orchestrate this, it's great to have, if you have a partner or you have a spouse or whatever it is, it has some income that allows you to have some runway as we keep using the word runways, but runway to make that transition. Cause the truth is if you're used to working a full-time job and you jump into real estate investing, you know, it's not a full-time job at the beginning. You have a lot of things to do, a lot of busy work, but unless you're spending an insane amount of money on advertising and generating leads and talking to sellers out of the gate, which very few people do, it's not a full-time yeah. job. So you should try to find some way to transition kind of on a part-time basis. Um, or even if you've lost a job or you do go cold Turkey, don't beat yourself up that you're, that it's not, you can't make it a full-time job, you know? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great point, Mike. And we yeah. can get into that. Uh, I'll wait for your, for your next question, but I have some more points on that. Yeah. You, yeah. So, um, so talk about like, you know, one of the things that you guys have been through and my wife and I have been through as partners and stuff is like how to clarify each person's responsibility. Cause in my experience, you guys work, you guys work really well together. Uh, but a lot of people struggle with that. They're like, yeah, a lot of times it's friends or buddies or brothers or whatever that are both good at the same things and they're both bad at the same things. And so in an ideal world, your partners should complement each other in different ways. Maybe you kind of share your experience there. Yeah. And I think to be honest, that is why we're still partners today. Because yeah. if let's just say a deal comes in, uh, you know, how it started is Travis would say, yes, let's do that. Knock that down. I would say, no, I want more information. You know, prove that to me. Like the, the business school can kind of get in the way sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And then Sam, he's kind of just like the, the sturdy ship. He's like, I see what you're saying and I see what you're saying. So I'm going to fry the fence as long as possible. <laughs> so we'll definitely point that out, whether you do, you know, Myers Briggs or whatever your personality test is, uh, having diversity between partners is absolutely key. And the thing is, I used to do this in my corporate job of you know, going in and trying to work with teams all across the, the globe and figure out who's who and, what is the problem they're trying to solve and how, how to get the team right? Because if you get the air right, the bees will make the honey. And I think we've done a really good job of that. Um, and now that we all, we know that it's very clear it works. And now we know each other better than we did two years ago. So it's like, I kind of know what Travis is going to say. I know what Sam is going to say. So I can almost better communicate with them because I know how they like their, like their information. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, talk a little about your business. You guys are, you guys are seeing some, so you guys are doing some decent volume now. Like talk about uh, what a typical month looks like for you guys in, in a two year time period. And I say, we go back two years and you guys were all still in corporate jobs. In fact, you just left your job here in the past couple months, right? Finally. So yeah. but talk about like yeah. that transition, like what the business looks like today. And I know in this business, 
every month is different. Every day is different, right? But what's a typical month for you guys look like? Yeah, I mean, the typical month is to put one deal under contract a week. Um, and again, that's been spotty, but our goal is to do four or five deals a month. And yep. we're getting into it now, so it's exciting um, because you you want to get there sooner, but like you mentioned earlier, even when you think you're doing it, it's not yet full time. Like it takes right. some time to get that up and running. Yep. So yeah, uh, I would say that we are hitting that number. Uh, again, you know, it's a little bit spotty, but that's our goal. It would be four or five deals a month. Uh, and that could be a combination of things. I mean, we want to take the wholesale assignment. Uh, we want to take, if, if we can't assign it, we'll take it down, do the minimum repairs and get that puppy out of there. Or the other thing is we've been doing some uh, hands-on flips as well. And we have a rock star agent that we work with who is our property manager for our rentals. And we're doing some referrals back and forth. So even when you think a lead is dead, that's been another way to kind of open up a little bit of revenue for us. So yeah, pay for they, some of your marketing costs. Yeah. So the real benefit of being in for two years is, and, and we're doing some owner finance deals too. So those are just things that we didn't really know about day one that now, I mean, you have to earn learning that, right? It takes right. a couple of years to get that. Yep. So, and, and just to break that down is Sam and I are really focused on uh, the acquisition. Uh, Travis has been, just amazing and his wife helps us out as well to uh the disposition so if we she's are not having home, babies when she's not and she had a baby the whole time i don't know how <laughs> yeah. they did it. a couple a few weeks back had a baby okay and i've been trying to work uh um and we we uh, previous um mastermind that we did with you guys is uh, profit first and accounting so i've really been trying to drive profitability home because you can be up you know making making top line revenue in this business but if you're not able to pay your people and be profitable that that's that's what you really want to get long term right. so that's our right. focus now yeah yeah cool maybe talk, maybe talk a little bit about like the importance of uh you know you guys joined our coaching program and i think you guys yeah. know like this is kind of how our coaching program works like we go above and beyond for the people that are paying attention and engaged right and so you know i think we've probably given you guys as much attention as anyone just because you you sucked it up and you listened and went out and kind of iterated and but just talk about the importance of kind of having that that kind of initial support in a coaching program uh, and what, what that's meant for you guys yeah i think look if you want to be good at anything you look at like a gold medalist or a team you have to have a coach right if you really want to really want to make it happen and uh we're so fortunate to have started day one with you guys and that's number one and the second thing is the quality of the coach right is if you're in real estate investing i mean you're going to have some embarrassing things to report to the coach yeah uh, and we've had many of those with you guys i think the first time we came out to an event on accident you know um and again we could go down a list of our failures as we sent out all of our marketing at once and then we <laughs> came that behind the bench. and then you left town <laughs> and it was, and that's what I was trying to explain to people is when you do have a job and you're trying to work on your business you make dumb decisions because there's so much going on in your life that you like you don't you know what i'm saying you make easy mistakes and what i like about the coaching program is you know we could go there say that you know we all have a good time laugh and joke about it but then we get back to like okay how are you going to do it next time okay what are you doing next and i think the access to you guys is was another impressive piece to me i mean we could text or call stinson and stinson at the time was you know really just focused on that yeah and being able to ask questions at weird times and get a and to get an answer an experienced answer and then have someone and have him follow up and say hey did you guys do what we talked about uh that there is like one we had a coach and two i think the second most important thing is it was the right coach for us yeah 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 that's cool and you know what, what's it if you know this or not what's interesting and i know we're talking about more personal experiences here but when you guys first came in it was a relatively small group of uh people yeah and we had a physical meeting uh shortly after you guys got started. If you think yeah. about, this is, this is a little bit of an inside uh, communication here, but think about the people that were there in the room and some yeah. of them that, you know, uh, Sean Thompson, Tyler Thompson, not yes. relation, not even related to each other, but some of those same guys, uh, Kevin Burke, who's rehabbed hundreds of houses for me, all those guys are in our mastermind now. They have all yes. excelled, right? And not, not all of them. There's some that are gone, but, um, yeah. or not, not associated with us anymore, but it was really the people that showed up and paid attention, helped support one another, right? All those people that built relationships and were serious about it. 
Yeah, so definitely. I mean, when I think about, I, it's hard for me to think about when we all started, us and yeah. you, because the yeah. size of the movement is now, I mean, there was 10 or 15 folks on that first trip out to Dallas. And like you said, a handful, like maybe half are, are still in there and not just there, but thriving. And the yeah. other ones that are left, they're even out doing a good job too. So yeah, to, to be a part uh, again, uh, um, with you guys at that point and see the growth, but the coaching hasn't changed. It's only got better because there's more people. It's got better because uh, that community there, um, I think with other people in the program are so supportive as well. That's another thing you don't think you're going to pick up is, oh, hey, Tyler Thompson, no relation, but we talk about things all the time when I have questions specific that I think he can help me out. So the community is strong, my friend. Yeah, I just thought, I thought of Vic Thompson, Tyler Thompson, Sean Thompson, like all three of you guys not yeah. related in any way. I just, I just I forgot yeah. about that. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, so uh, talk a little bit about, maybe you can kind of share your biggest tip for that transition out of corporate, out of corporate America. So you guys are now members of our Investor Fuel mastermind because you you're doing enough volume for that and have a high level of success but i know at the last meeting uh we have our our next meeting that happens to be next week but a quarter ago i remember you left there and you like announced to the whole group you're like i've decided to leave my job and you just like and you did it i know you did it for accountability reasons you're like yeah don't, don't yeah. make me have to come back and say no i didn't right <laughs> but just talk talk about it took it took you know a year and a half or so for you to get up to that point talk about like your biggest tip for getting to that point yeah, for, those that, I, for I, those that are kind of thinking about that or want that aspire to do that maybe. Yeah, I think um, it's a little bit different for everyone because it's such a personal decision. So I'll share kind of where I was coming from and there was really, you know, two factors that started to build up is, you know, Sam and Travis and the business, the business was picking up. And they were learning so much. And I, so when I was checking in with them, and again, I was kind of limited in my role. I got a promotion at work too. So I had even less time and we're picking up more momentum. So that was kind of uh, issue number one is, man, the business is picking up and I'm not able to hitch on like I want to. The second thing was that you got to think about is, I think more maybe unique to some people that are thinking about joining is that paycheck that paycheck, that paycheck. Ooh, it's nice to get paid, yeah. you know, first and 15th. And you can take a few plays off. You know, there's not a ton of penalty. Uh, it's different when you're running your own business. It's directly correlated. So my tip, Tim, like you mentioned earlier, is, is figure out what your biggest fear is holding you back. Is it the lack of a paycheck? Is it um, you know, I'm scared that we're going to fail. Is it, I don't have the right support in place. I think when you start to figure out what's holding you back and I shared it with my partners, I kept saying like, Hey, this is, this is why I'm a little bit reluctant, you know, and especially in a financial position, you know, it can be up and down. And if the core business isn't performing right, you want to make sure, Hey, if I leave that job, how are we going to bail us out? So, so my tip there is identify what's, holding you back because if you don't know what you're scared of you can't overcome it yeah so yeah for me for me uh just to answer that it was you know i really didn't want that i busted my ass to get that job going and i really wanted to milk that through the end of the year if i could so we could have some more runway to grow the business maybe a little more marketing spend and whatnot yeah. and i think the other thing that's just tough to admit is um you know turning that check off and putting it all putting it all on the line going all in I think you can talk the toughest game you want, but when it goes time to make that decision, and that's why I did it so publicly, is the accountability has been uh, so well supported. I got a bunch of comments back, I think from Sean Thompson on, hey, when you do quit, you know, I suggest you go do this, write yourself a letter, make a video to yourself so you can look back on this because um, yeah. you're going to be really happy with cool. the decision. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a little bit of a drug, right? I mean, not, every, not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur, but corporate America does a good job of either cutting you loose someday or keeping you just enough incentivized to never leave. <laughs> just like little, little promotions, a little more money and just like, eh, it, it makes the decision yeah. harder, especially after you have kids and have a family, have other responsibilities and all that stuff. It, it gets harder and harder. And the truth is for most people, it, it will never get easier. So if you're going to, if you're going to jump off the high dive, like just do it and get it over with. <laughs> 
Yeah, one follow up on that. That is the big thing is it's not going to get easier. And now Travis is married with a kid. Sam is married and I'm not married. So we kind of have this diversity within our group uh, yep. too, which helps. Uh, yeah. But yeah, cool. sooner rather well, than later. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if, you, if you don't mind, uh, would you share uh, just a quick little testimonial? We've talked a lot, a lot about coaching. I don't want this whole show to be a testimonial, but would you mind just sharing a little testimonial of the Flip Nerd coaching program? Yeah. So, you know, I couldn't be more than more happy to be uh, a part of you guys' this program and to have you guys as coaches. You know, I, again, I think the top two reasons are if you want to be great at something, you should get a coach. Right. I know there's other people um, that have even successful like you. I'm not sure if you have a coach directly, but I know of others in the group that even have coaches and they're uh, huge. Uh, uh, they're very successful already. And then the other thing is, uh, I think what determines whether you stay with that coach or you go is the quality of coaching. And you guys have been super available um, to us, very responsive. And I think the quality of the experience that you get from the coaching that you guys provide and from the rest of the community, because now you guys are looking for certain, um, certain qualifications for people to join the group where they have some experience under the belt right. and you can leverage the fuel family, the tribe, whatever you want to call the community right. that you're a part of. And there's some really, really good support in there. Yeah. Do you guys, do you think that you guys, uh, you guys have con gone from kind of idea, I want to do this in about yeah. two years to, like you said, four or five deals a month probably. And, and on a growth yeah. path, right? You just finally left your job a couple uh, months ago and, and on a growth path. Yeah. You guys think you could have done that as fast without being a part of the community and kind of having that underlying support? Not at all. I think that was the, you know, the cornerstone for us really setting that up because we had the chance to come and check in and see where others in the group were at. And that helped build confidence of saying, okay, let's, let's draw a line in the sand. You know, we look at our progress from the last quarter that we did what we're saying we're going to do. Um, so I don't think that we would have been able to, to set as big as goals that we, we set and building that accountability because we know when we come to the events, like, okay, we want to, you know, show that we are doing what we said and everyone that's a chance to celebrate with others. So I think that was not only the cornerstone of us uh, having the success we had, but it also helped us build a ton of momentum, especially when you're making some of these big decisions to leave your job. So, yeah, I don't awesome, think we could have did it. With you. Well, thank you. I, pre I would definitely appreciate you guys for um, setting a good example of what, what you can do when you put your mind to it. Right. So we, we, as a coach and a mentor, I always appreciate the people that actually listen and, apply it and want are hungry to learn more, you know, so we definitely appreciate that. Yeah, Mike. And the last thing I'll say is it doesn't feel like a coach and coachy relationship. It just kind of feels yeah. like we're partners, right? Um, it doesn't feel like it's a super formal. Uh, and yeah. that's just nice when you go to pick up the phone and talk to someone. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, uh, Vicky, if folks want to learn more, you guys have, since then you guys have started a, uh, you're starting a, um, a local uh, real estate group in Athens, which I know a lot of people that are listening yeah. here are not probably local, but there'll be some, but t talk about like yeah. how folks can learn more about what you're doing and what you've got going on if they're interested. Yeah. Another one of our goals is to put more out there on social, just what we're doing. So, yeah. uh, all three of the partners were all on Instagram and Facebook, Victor Thompson, Sam Thurman, Travis Oglesby. Uh, we do have our own page, uh, runway properties and North Georgia home buyers. Because we are in a smaller market in Athens, but we kind of work the North Georgia area. Um, they can go to runwaypropertiesllc.com. And then we're actually, uh, we tend to speak at uh, the local RIA. We're trying to put some more energy behind that. And um, it's the Athens Real Estate Investor Association. And we're talking about property management tonight. So That's a lot of links. So, uh, we'll, get, we'll get them on the, uh, on the, uh, in the show notes on the page. So appreciate you, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate you. I wish you guys all the best for sure. And, and I'm excited to kind of see where you go from here. So uh, it's yes. really cool. Everybody, hey, thanks for joining us today. Um, if you haven't, we've been doing the show now for five and a half years. Kind of hard to believe that actually a little more than five and a half years. If you haven't yet, we'd love it if you subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Google Play, YouTube, anywhere you could possibly consume the show at. Of course, you can see all of our shows, hundreds of them, actually thousands across the different shows we've had, about 1,500. 1500 video shows on real estate investing on flipnerd.com. So Vic, thanks again for joining us today, my friend. Hey, thanks, Mike. Take care. See you soon. Awesome. Everybody keep fighting for freedom. We'll see you on the next show.
Thanks for listening to today's show. There are three ways I can help you start or grow your real estate investing business. If you're a new investor and just getting started, the Flip Nerd Investor Coaching Program is the most effective program in America. I've been coaching and mentoring new real estate investors for 10 years, and my students have literally purchased thousands and thousands of properties. Many of them started with little to no experience at all. Our program is a paint by numbers program where we tell you exactly what to do week by week to make sure that you don't get distracted on your way to results. We show you how to build a real business, not just create another job for yourself. New memberships are limited. You can learn more and apply or schedule a call with me and my team at flipnerd.com slash coaching. If you're an experienced investor doing a minimum of 10 deals a year, up to 500 deals a year or more, or have a multi-million dollar real estate portfolio already, you should check out our powerful Investor Fuel Real Estate Investor Mastermind. Over 100 of the nation's leading real estate investors are members, and it's not uncommon for our members to two to five X their business just from getting around other members at Investor Fuel. At Investor Fuel, each of us are business advisors to one another's businesses, but we don't stop at business. We focus heavily on becoming better people and living fuller lives. If you're looking for fuel for your business or fuel for your life, please check out InvestorFuel.com. Applications and interviews are required as most investors are not a fit for our community. Please learn more at InvestorFuel.com. If you're not ready for coaching or masterminds, but eager to start learning more about investing, please join our private Facebook group by visiting flipnerd.com slash Facebook. New members get access to free training from us right here at flipnerd.com. And it's a community to safely ask your questions, a great place to get started. Simply go to flipnerd.com slash Facebook to request your access today.